Hello there, my dears. Here we are back for lesson 54. We're still in the review. I have no neutral thoughts. And then it goes right on to say, and I see no neutral things. As always, it's tying together thinking and seeing what I'm aware of. And then the last three in this review are emphasizing the fact that I'm never alone. It says I'm not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing and the next one about my thinking. And because of that, I'm just determined to change my mind. Because if I'm being unhelpful to myself, I'm being equally unhelpful and unsupportive of everyone else. Not really a good choice. <laughs> so now we're going to go back and realize that I see objects and I think thoughts, and it's all really the same thing. Now, we're going to take a look at this first one that says, and nothing that I think slash see is neutral, and that's because all thoughts have power. So I'm either going to see what it refers to as a false world, which is a world of separate, unrelated things, and nothing much cares about anything else, or a real one, but above all, there's no such thing as thoughts not having power, of not causing my experience one way or the other. And you can't turn it off. You can't say, could I just sit here and daydream or be mad at this person for a little while and have nothing happen? No, there's no such thing as nothing happening as a result of our thinking. And the real world, which is one of feeling loved and cared for and beautiful I can be aware of just as much as I am aware of the less than satisfactory one right now. It says, change your mind and a different kind of world will arise for me to see right here in the very same place it seems like I've always been. What I see shows me what I'm thinking. We've talked about that before. The world is like a big diagnostic, just like an MRI gives you some idea what's going on in your body. Your world tells you what's going on in your thought processes. And then again, what I see shows me what I think. And then it's as clear as it can be. The world I see is a representation of my state of mind, not anybody else's state of mind. My state of mind, seeing and thinking, being so intimately related, what I see and experience in my world is also going to change automatically. Just like the image in the mirror automatically changes, doesn't have a vote when I change my clothes in front of it. Now, I have no private thoughts. You think, darn, I hate the idea I have no private thoughts. <laughs> it says even the mad idea of separation had to be shared before it could form the basis of this collective world I see. Yet this sharing is a sharing of nothing that means anything. And as I continue engaging in my fear-driven thoughts, I'm going to call to the fear-driven thoughts of others. Gee, that's not really a good idea. But I can also, through my own loving thoughts, call to the loving thoughts of those around me so that it dawns on our minds you might say, as a joint venture. And then it reminds us in the fourth lesson down here, I'm just not alone in anything at all. Anything I do or say affects everything in the whole universe. Well, that's quite the opposite of a neutral thought that would do nothing. It says nothing that we, as an expression of the only creative force there is, can possibly think or act in vain. I just can't help being powerful whether I like it or not. And therefore, listen to this, this unspeakable power that's the truth of us has the power to positively affect everything. And then this last one says, well, given the unspeakable, and we can't even wrap our heads around it, magnitude of the power that we actually are, I'm just determined to see things differently. I want to look upon the witness. I want to see proof 
that my thinking has changed. And I want to behold this proof of what happens when I trade in fear for love. And then finally it says, what I really want to do is look upon what it calls the real world, which is powered by loving thoughts, not fear-driven ones. It says, if I do this, I can see a world that proves to me that love has replaced fear, abundance has replaced loss, laughter has replaced tears, and I'm going to add peace has replaced war. And I want to look upon a world that can prove to me that my will, which is love, and the will of Creator, which is also love, are one. I want to see proof that my thinking makes a difference. And as I keep changing my mind and watch my world be different, what more proof than that do I possibly need? I hope you have a wonderful day practicing and realizing how powerful you actually are. Bye.